Hey there combo fans, I am Bryant Cook and today we're playing Blue Black Reanimator, a deck if you've been playing Legacy for a long time, you might remember from the 2008 to 2011 period, it had Mystical Tutor, Foreign Tomb, or Reanimate, it was considered the best deck in the format, it ultimately got Mystical Tutor banned, and then people played it for a few years after that with the release of Gristlebrand, it you know, was pretty popular on the original Star City game circuit, it then died out, and then later on, Black Red Reanimator became the new hotness. Recently, with a brand new card from Frexia All Will Be One, the deck is back. I'm talking about Blue Black Reanimator due to attracts a Grand Unifier, a 7 mana legendary 7 7 angel with flying death touch vigilance lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, you reveal the top 10. The top 10 cards of your deck, and then you put a card of each type to your hand. So land, instant sorcery, creature, etc. So that's what the deck is looking to do, and with Atraxa being a blue card, it pitches to both Force of Will and a card from Modern Horizons 2, Grief. So it has pitch equity. It's not terrible to see in your opening hand. The list that we're playing today is sort of a combination of lists, if I'm being completely honest. This archetype took second at a Legacy Challenge two weeks ago, and then other streamers have been working on the deck in the middle of this. Uh, shout outs to Strifo, who's been putting in a lot of work as well. So I've sort of combined lists and ideas, and that's what we're playing today. When we look at this deck, there's no Dark Ritual. So this deck is a little bit less explosive than its Black Red counterpart. Instead, we're playing Brainstorm for added consistency. Instead of Faithless Looting, we have Careful Study. We have Daze as an extra protection spell. Obviously, we have Force of Will plus Grief, so no Unmask. Which is worth noting because you can't unmask yourself, put Crystal Brand to the graveyard, and reanimate it. This deck is inherently a little bit slower than the other build. So why play this deck? I think it really comes down to having access to Force of Will. And the people that want to play this deck want to be able to counterspell things on the stack. Uh, I'm not sure if this is better or not than Black Red Reanimator. Uh, and, and if you want my honest two cents before we even play a single match, I could be wrong by the end of this league. I don't think that this is better than Black Red. Uh, that's just a hunch. I think that Black Red does something pretty unique by being an explosive deck. And people are really high on the Atraxa train right now, and they're trying to put it in everything. So I will, I'm certainly going to be one of these people over the next few days. I have another Atraxa deck in my recording queue. But... I think you're supposed to try to push the limits on new cards and see what's possible. And that's what we're going to do today. So hopefully you enjoy the video. Uh, I could also just be entirely wrong. It might be way better than Black Red Reanimator. And I'll change my tune by the end of these five matches. So the overall idea of the deck is to get Atraxa or Gristlebrand to the graveyard generally. We, by doing this, we have Entomb and Careful Study, and then we have 10 Reanimate spells. So Reanimate itself, a one black sorcery, you put that creature from the graveyard, any graveyard really, uh, onto the battlefield, you lose life equal to its mana value. We then have Animate Dead, it's an enchant that lives on the creature, that creature gets minus one, minus zero, and then Exhum. Some lists play Dance of the Dead, but I don't like the idea that your 7-7 seven, seven lifelinker uh, comes into play tapped. It's kind of stinky. So instead, we're playing Exhum, which says each player is a creature from their graveyard, but I think that's going to ultimately be fine. So really, we're really going after a Tracks or Gristlebrand. That said, this deck does have the backup plan of Archon of Cruelty, a non-legendary creature in case your opponent has Caracas. Same thing with Grief. There will be games where you just lead on double Grief, and that's perfectly fine. In the sideboard, we have Sarah's Emissary is an additional target. You can name Creature or Sorcery versus Combo. And then we have some fluster storms for the combo matchups also versus control if we want it. One of the biggest reasons to play blue is that you do get access to show and tell. That said, a lot of black red reanimator sideboards do have this in the sideboard with a single underground C. So it's not unique to this deck, but you're certainly a better show and tell deck. And then Snuff Out. I think that this was brilliant tech from Strifo. This gives you an easy way to answer initiative creatures out of the blue black reanimator shell. That's what I've got. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, let's just hop on in and play some lovely legacy Magic the Gathering. I'll see you in the first match. Don't go anywhere.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first round. We are on the play and we've decided to keep our seven. So we have brainstorm to look for one of our 10 reanimate effects on the first turn. We have petal plus brainstorm plus then we have two mana. So a careful study or even this entomb plus reanimate does it for us. I have no clue what our opponent's playing. So we're going to keep and just kind of see where things go. So we'll play out a lotus petal. And it looked like an F6 from our opponent. Let's cast that Brainstorm, see if we can get lucky. Reanimate. No reanimate, but we did hit a careful study. I think we can probably get rid of Entomb Archon of Cruelty. And then we'll fetch. Grab the Island here. And let's careful study. We hit reanimate, so we can put Gristlebrand onto the battlefield with Days back up. Get rid of the polluted Delta because we have grief in our deck. And now we will reanimate the Gristle. We go down to 11 and then 4, draw 7. Play a Lotus Petal. And why not? Let's careful study again. Ditch the Gristlebrand, get rid of the reanimate. Hmm. The island's actually a little awkward here. Maybe the verdant. And then we'll pass. <clears throat> Not a bad turn one, though. Scalding Tarn. For an underground sea. Brainstorm. We'll let that happen. So a difference between Rakdos and Blue Black here is that the Rakdos version has somewhere between six and eight free pitch discard spells that you can find off Crystal Brand. Here we found Triple Days, No Force of Will. We only have two copies of Grief. And as you can see, multiple days is, doesn't really work when you only have one land. Mishra's Bobble. Are we facing the Epic Storm? It looks like it. Okay, so they get to draw off Bobble. Animate dead. Let's go to combat. Swing. So they'll fall to 12. We'll go up to 11. We'll draw seven more. We did not hit the um, grief. That's the word I was looking for. And now we'll entomb. Atraxa, I don't even know how good it actually is here. I mean, I guess we'll get the Atraxa. It's fine. And then we want to animate dead the Atraxa. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. So some sort of blue-black bobble deck. I'm guessing it's the Epic Storm, so we'll bring in Sirius Emissary. Cluster Storm. I think that's all we really want out of this sideboard. Our kind of cruelty is a little bit lackluster, so we can board out one of those for the Sirius Emissary. And then... We're at 62. Could probably shave a land, so let's get rid of the basic island. And I'm going to get rid of another Archon of Cruelty. I just don't think Archon is particularly good in this matchup. It is important to keep your creature count high, but it's not a, a card we really want to put onto the battlefield. And if I'm wrong about it being the Epic Storm, we still have one in our deck if it's useful. Okay, so this hand has a lot of potential. Like I mentioned, we have 10 reanimate spells. So we have force blue card, which is obviously good against the combo deck. And we have the potential for a turn one or turn two fatty, assuming that we draw one of those reanimate spells. Also fatty is in a term of endearment. Uh, we love fatties here. Uh, who doesn't want to put a gristle brand or a Traxa into play? Marsh flats. Underground sea again. Dark ritual, it's looking like the epic storm. That's a wish claw. It activated it immediately. Oh friend. Oh friend, not like this. Not like this. 
Oh, that's just unfortunate. Force of will. No concession, not yet at least. We'll take a draw. Another in tune. We'll play out the pedal. Pass the turn. And there's the concession. We are 1 0 defeating the best Storm deck in the format. I'll see you in match number two. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. On the draw for match number two, we've opened up a kind of unplayable hand we will ship. Do we keep this? I think so. We need a careful study or entomb, but we'll see. There's also the old classic uh, move to discard. Discard Atroxa, try to reanimate it plan. We'll play out the underground sea with the draw from Brainstorm. In my mind, I remembered our opponent being a Maverick player, but here they have a Flooded Strand, so who knows? Obviously, this isn't Maverick. Tundra. Into Panda. They're passing. Cool. I'm not going to cast Brainstorm here. I just don't feel... Like, a lot of players feel pressure to cast their spells because they're like, oh, my opponent will have Counter Magic. Who cares? Like, you're a deck with Counter Magic and play to it as well. I just don't feel the anxiety to cast my spells a lot of the time. Like, I wait for an opening, and then I strike. They grab another copy of Tundra. Sweet. Third Tundra. Take a draw. Lotus Petal. We'll play another Underground Sea and pass the turn. Frantic Inventory. Okay, so we're on, like, 2017 control. Another Ponder. And they don't shuffle. Okay. Let's brainstorm. Grief isn't bad here, but it doesn't quite get us to being able to play Atroxa. I'm actually looking at this as a potential to hardcast grief. Grab a seat, I guess. Take a draw step. Exhum. So you might be thinking, why are you looking to hardcast grief here instead of pitch reanimate? That plan loses to a swords anyway, and I'm not really interested in giving up too many cards at the moment grief resolves okay so there are some sort of mentor deck let's take one of their forces and we'll pass the turn they drew land force so now they can play the mentor yep we're off to the races another land swing yeah, we've drawn a lot of lands this game, that's for sure. Pass. Here's the preordain. Surprise, surprise. Two on the bottom. And they drew a ponder off that. Pretty, uh, pretty good hit. Not looking good for us at the moment. And they did not shuffle off the ponder. They swing. We'll take four down to 14. No need to fetch. We'll take a draw. Another exhum. Swing batter batter swing. They wisely don't block. And we'll pass the turn. Yeah, we're not winning this game based on uh, how this played out. Another frantic inventory, sure thing. So, sometimes in Legacy you'll face death. And I'm not trying to make fun of our opponent here in any way. I don't want people to think that. But sometimes you'll face decks that cannot simply be a top of the metagame deck. And a deck like we're seeing here, with main deck minor missteps, force of will, frantic inventory, this deck is never beating the initiative, but it's going to prey on decks like what we're playing today. And that just happens sometimes. Uh, people choose or accept that they're not going to beat, you know, a part of the metagame. Sometimes that part of the metagame is a huge slice. But, you know, you got to take your lumps when you get crushed by it. And they swords their own creature, which does create lethal. Yep. Okay. We'll go to the next one. We definitely want Flusterstorm here. Maybe even Show and Tell. 
Speed is really not the name of the game here, so you're allowed to board out Lotus Petal. I'm trying to figure out what other card I want to board out. Maybe like two careful study, but then we only have six ways to get our creatures to the graveyard. Maybe it's like a couple copies of days. Let's try days. It does seem a little bit lackluster against the mentor deck. Sure, we'll try this. Really wish I had another blue card instead of one of these uh, exhumes. Included delta, we'll fetch. Underground sea and careful study. We found a another blue card. You love to see that. And let's get rid of an extra exhum here. Our best draw on our turn is definitely a land. Scalding Tarn and they pass. Draw. Not the land we wanted. Let's test out the waters with the Thought Seas. Interesting. Let's take the Force Negation. And then we'll pass the turn. Interesting that they chose not to play Ponder. I guess it was their second blue card. What did you draw? Counterbalance. That's brutal. We did not rip another land. We have to attempt the reanimate here. Hope that they have a land on top. Nope, never lucky. Ah, oh, jeez. What a draw. Draw for turn. Try another reanimate. Counterbalance triggers. I guess we know that they have Ponder in hand. We would have had to fight through this reanimate at some point anyway. We just have to let it go. So now they'll reveal the Ponder. Pass the turn. Okay, so they shuffled so they don't know their top card at the moment. They're playing the Ponder to help Sculpt. Okay, so they have four cards in hand and we know two of them. They did not shuffle. I'm just going to pass here. I don't think we necessarily need to play into their counterbalance. I want to try to resolve a brainstorm at some point. They play the dress down. Cool. So now they're clearing what they their known information on Ponder. They have four cards. Let's attempt an unstep brainstorm. Their top card is dressed down. And there's the lands we've wanted. Four cards. We'll fetch. I guess we'll get an underground seed. They haven't been fetching basics, so back to basics is a card you normally care about, but here they're not representing it. We'll try the reanimate. Hard cast force and negation. We know that they have a force of will in hand. I think I'm going to try to push the envelope here brainstorm so they can put their force on top of their deck that's a, a really sly move and we'll pass so they likely still have the dress down on top i don't think we really need to play into that we'll just pass the turn they clear the top with frantic inventory and now the dress down that was on top of their deck surprise surprise preordain Flooded Strand. I'm not going to fetch here because a fourth land would allow us to double reanimate into their force. And they found Surgical. That's brutal. There's only two Gristle Brands in our deck, but we're just so far away. Let's see if we can get that force out of their hand. They don't know the top of their deck. They reveal Frantic Inventory to the Counterbalance. Mystical Dispute, sure. We'll pass. So this Frantic Inventory is a draw two. There is one already in the graveyard. Preordain. They put two copies on the top. Pass. They play the Frantic Inventory, so they've drawn their two. I'm probably going to concede shortly. We've been out of this game for a while. And they found their wing con. So... Losses happen, I'd like to say that. Uh, like I mentioned, our opponent likely is never going to beat the initiative deck, but they happen to crush decks like Blue Black Reanimator. That is the, uh, that's how metagames work. So we're one and one, no need to be upset. Like it's literally just magic, who cares? Match number three is coming up.
Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number three, we're on the draw. I have no idea what our opponent's playing. Our hand's a little awkward here. Yes, you can draw and discard with the Atroxa, but that means turn three Atroxa at the very earliest, assuming your opponent doesn't do anything meaningful. Instead, we should just mull again. Okay, we'll try this out and get rid of... Whoop, I did not mean to click on that. Nope, cancel, cancel. This Lotus Petal. There's a Saga, okay. What you doing over there? Draw. I think we'll just play the Delta and pass. You could try to careful study, but if we're facing lands, I don't want to telegraph that crop rotation blows us out. So I want to, you know, uh, hide a little bit of information. It looks like it is not lands. Sure, you can have a nettle cyst. I don't care about that. And on their end step, we will brainstorm. Try to find that creature to put into the battlefield. And there we go. Uh, we'll just put these two on top, I suppose. We could also put a Archon onto the table, which might actually be better because it keeps the Saga in check as well. Is that crazy? It might be crazy. Doesn't lose to Caracas. We can always come back with a Troxel later, too. I'm feeling the Archon right now. You can't stop me. I'm the one clicking. You gotta deal with it. Trigger. Sweet. Pass the turn. So now Saga will happen. Let's see if they make a construct they shouldn't when we have an Archon. And they're just going to tap for mana. Okay, the ability is now finally resolving. Masterwork of Ingenuity? What is that? You can have it copy any equipment. Sure, so Living Weapon. Still does not combat my Archon of Cruelty very well. Sure. Ooh, Metamorph! That's brutal! So they can now copy my Archon, and I'm the one getting blown out of the water here. Wow. So we'll discard the Atroxa. Okay, we have a we have something going on here. And a Soul Guide Lantern? Holy moly. Wow. So I guess if I would have gone for Atroxa or Gristlebrand, I could have drawn into a force. But I was not expecting Frexia Metamorph Soul Guide Lantern uh plus another creature. So that way if I reanimated my Archon, uh they wouldn't have to sack theirs. Like this was just a perfect sequencing. And we're we're out of this. We got smoked. So all our opponent has to do here is activate their soul guide in response. And even if they don't, we're not winning this. Yeah, let's go to the next one. We got bamboozled. We're definitely interested in show and tell. And echoing truth. What do we board out? 66 cards is a lot. Days is probably not great versus the City of Traders deck, so we can probably take those out. Maybe a few copies of Thoughtseize? I'm not really sure here. Let's try this. Boarding with this deck is very difficult. There's so few flex slots. On the play for game two. This hand just doesn't do a whole lot. I think we can do better. Sure, we have the Echoing Truth to get rid of the Leyline of the Void. If they were to play one, I'll try this. No ley line. We would have Delta past the turn. Ancient Tomb. Retrofitter Foundry, okay. Hope a Gearper. What? Well, fetch. I love me a good Hope a Gearper. And Tomb. We will get Gristlebrand this time. Untap. Horse of Bull was a good one. 
play the exhum Ooh, and the force of will coming up huge here they uh could have surgical on their own turn but instead i drew force of will exhum they sack the hope to make a four four and then they get the hope back good play good play we'll draw seven do i draw seven more we only have two griefs in our deck. But if I draw one of the Lotus Petals, but I think we boarded out two Lotus Petals as well. Or at least that's something I was thinking about. I did not. So we still have a couple Petals in there. Let's try it. I'll go to four life. Okay. Now we'll go to cleanup. Discard the Archon of Cruelties. We'll get rid of a couple lands. A few Animate Deads. Probably this Entomb. So if they attack and I block the Hope of Gearper, they can sacrifice the Hope, and then I die to the Construct token. So we can't do that. Here we are forced to block the Construct. Well, I will force a Will your Metal... <laughs> can't talk. Phyrexian Metamorph. Pitching. Careful study. They could have attacked and then had their own Gristlebrand, because I'm not allowed to block the Thopter. Another Show and Tell. Animate dead. Our kind of cruelty. Triggers. Triggers again. They get rid of the the four four. Okay, we draw another show and tell. So if I attack, they can block and then sacrifice and make a four four. I think that's fine. And that looks like what they're going to do here. So I will not gain seven life because my creature never deals damage. Sweet. And we've won game number two. Maybe we do want the days. I don't I just don't know. Maybe, no, days on the draw has gotta be bad. After seeing the surgicals though, I'm just a little nervous. Is it crazy to bore out a couple reanimate effects and then bring back in Thoughtseize? Let's try this, I suppose. Good hand. Keep. Graft Digger's Cage. I'm going to allow that to resolve. We have double Echoing Truth. I can always answer that later. We also have Show and Tells in our deck. I just don't know how important that card actually is. We'll pass. Mike has some Gardens. So now they can copy Graft Digger's Cage if they so choose. But Echoing Truth does get around that. They copy Cage. Sure. Draw for turn. Reanimate. We'll pass. So on their end step, we can Echoing Truth, Graft Digger's Cage, untap, and Tomb Reanimate with Force Backup. There's a Saga with three cards in hand. Cranial Plating. We have to let that go. Yep. So we'll take six here. They have two cards. We have to hope that it's not like double surgical or surgical plus, um, I don't know, Fairy Macabre. I guess Fairy Macabre would beat me on its own, but can't play around everything. All right, so on their end stuff, we will Echoing Truth the original cage. It will bounce this one as well. They share the same name. Untap, take a draw. Careful study. So we can use this Archon instead now, which I like. So we'll put that Archon to the graveyard and get rid of, I think I want to keep the Brainstorm. Play land for turn. Reanimate Archon of Cruelty. So now they will sacrifice their Ornithopter and another force running hot. There's a Saga goes to two. We know that they have a Cajun hand which I'm going to allow to resolve. There's the Metamorph. We will force of will that. And now they have Cage and one unknown. Sure. Take a draw. Atraxa Grand Unifier. Swing better, better. Swing. Another reanimate. So we could, in theory, bounce the cage once again and put another creature onto the battlefield. We'll pass the turn. They discarded Warping Whale that time. Our opponent taking a while on this uh, Saga trigger. Sure, that's fine. 
Did they fail the find? I'm not mistaken you, right? Like, all these things were already on the battlefield? Okay, they just said GG's. Uh, GG's to our opponent. Looks like we've got this one. And that's that. We are now 2-1. Two, two matches left. Let's see if we can uh, win those. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. All right, match four, we're on the draw. Keep, 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 keep. We just need to find an Entomb. Misty Rainforest, pass. Sure. Take a draw. Scalding Tarn will pass back. Next turn we can Brainstorm Fetch. Watery Grave. So we're facing Shadow. Him to Torok. So we will, in response, grab an Underground Sea. Blow to blue. Cast Daze. Opponent with five cards in hand. And Torok has been countered. I think I will brainstorm here. See if we can get lucky. And the answer was no, we cannot. All right, so we have a whole bunch of lands. I can't help but wonder if maybe this deck has too many lands in it based on the small sample size uh, so far. It just seems like we get flooded a lot. Sure, another ponder. They play an island and it looks like they're passing the turn. We'll fetch. I think I'm actually going to grab a basic swamp. So that way we're not weak to wasteland. Stifle. Sure, I'm flooded anyway. That's fine. Play my land pass. People have this weird obsession with stifle. Uh, once again, I'm not trying to make my opponent feel bad. It's just like this card has not aged particularly well over the fire design era. And people just try to force it into everything. And there's a natural friction in deck building when you want to play cards like Thoughtseize or Hymnatorok because you want to tap out for Thoughtseize so you're not holding open mana for Stifle and you want to tap out for him. So like there's just this friction there of cards that don't work well together, but I guess it works fine enough for this person. Um, let's go get a basic play out the Lotus Petal. Careful study. There we go. Hell yeah. Discard our two creatures. Let's attempt to reanimate the Gristle Brand. Force pitch days. Okay, so they have two cards in hand now. There is one downside here. The Shadow Deck recently has been playing Grief Reanimate. So if they're on that build, they can reanimate our own creatures. That said, seeing Stifle, they're probably not. They have three in hand, another reanimate. Let's try bringing back the Gristle Brand. This actually can be stifled for what it's worth. Trigger. Draw seven. Lovely. So we could put an Atroxa into play here. This would put us to three. Triggers, we'll auto yield. We definitely want Lotus Petal. We'll take the Archon of Cruelty, Daze, Underground Sea, no Sorcery. Play out the Lotus Petal, and then we'll go to clean up. Get rid of a couple lands, we'll get rid of our creatures. Get rid of this Animate Dead. Maybe I should have kept the Atroxa actually, because it would be a, a force card to pitch to force, and then we could have double days. So a small oversight there. But it looks like our opponent's just content with dying. And by dying, I mean going to one. Swing better, better. Swing. And then post combat, we can cast Exhum. We'll bring back our kind of cruelty and end our opponent's uh, existence. Triggers. And they discard a shadow. Lovely. Okay, so we're facing Shadow. We'll switch this back over to card view. I did restart between match three and four, my computer, not just Magic Online. I noticed that my noise gate was a little bit off, so I wanted to try to fix that. That's Shadow. I don't mind the flusters. They stop things like him, but also their forces. I'm sort of interested in sneaking or show and tell to beat Graveyard Hate. 66 cards is a lot. 
They're on Wasteland Stifle, so I don't want to board out lands or Lotus Petals. I think we can board out two Animate Deads after seeing Stifle in their deck, though. Probably take out a couple copies of Days, especially on the draw. And I think it's supposed to be two Lotus Petal. Submit. I know that boarding out Petal versus the Wasteland Stifle deck uh, seems wrong, but everything else is just so vital. Sure, we'll try this. Opponent plays a Scalding turn and passes the turn. Pick a draw. Love lands. Pass. Misty Rainforest. So this is the interaction I'm talking about here, where if our opponent does decide to him to Torox, him to Torox is here, they're no longer holding open Stifle. And it's just this awkwardness within deck building that you don't have to impose on yourself. You can just choose not to play the card that doesn't fit your strategy. And they do not shuffle. Take a draw. I'm just fine going Lango for now. Definitely interested in fetching for basics when we can. Another Brainstorm. Misty Rainforest. They have six in hand. Watery Grave. Sure. Draw for turn. Atroxa. Let's fetch. You, would you like to stifle me? You would. Okay, let's attempt to fetch again. Can't say I love that stifle, but each their own. And I'm tempted here to brainstorm rather than just dump the Atroxa into the graveyard. Because if they have a surgical, we can't really protect. We're definitely getting rid of the swamp. And I believe we just pass here. Layer number four. That's the shadow. They have four cards in hand, 11 life. And another shadow. Okay. In our upkeep, we'll attempt to fetch. And if they stifle me here, I'm drawing the swamp anyway. Okay. So now we'll get a fresh draw. Let's attempt a careful study. Forest blue card was good. We'll ditch both creatures. And let's attempt to exhume the daze. Hmm. I think I need to let that happen. We'll pass. So on their turn, they can fetch and then play a, uh, a watery grave. But I don't believe that's lethal. Yep, so four, so these become sevens and I would go to three. Assuming that they have a fourth watery grave in their deck. And they don't. Okay, so we will go to, t uh, I'm sorry, we'll go to seven here. They have three in hand. Reanimate. Play out the watery grave. Animate dead. So I can get a Troxa here, which is very good, but if they can make their creatures larger, it's a little bit awkward. Our kind of cruelty gets rid of one shadow, but then. Okay, well, if I get Archon, I can actually then put a Trox into play using Reanimate. I think that's the line. Force pitching force, they have one card. We will force back. Enemy dead. What is your one card? Enemy dead triggers. If it's stifle, you actually have me. Okay. The Archon ability. They discard a wasteland. And now we will reanimate the Atroxa. This puts me down to two, but we have two uh, pretty large creatures here to take over this game. We want the enemy dead. Daze doesn't do a whole lot. They have four lands. Grief. Grief doesn't, they don't have a hand. Let's, let's get our kind of cruelty. Well, it's free to take a fetch land. I guess we'll take days. And careful study. Okay. Pass the turn. They have a 9-9 nine, nine death shadow. If they attack, we just block with the Atroxa. Their creature will die because... For some reason, Atroxa as a 7-7 seven, seven has Death Touch, and then we gain life up to 9, and then we can just bring back the Atroxa next turn. Okay. Let's uh, attack with the Archon, which should be lethal. Trigger. They lose a Surgical Extraction, and we are victorious over Shadow. Boom. 3-1, one, one match left to go.
With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pinned comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match. We are on the play. Blue Black Reanimator. This is a very good hand we will keep. We'll play the Underground Sea and Lotus Petal. Looks like we could be the Epic Storm here, but instead we're Reanimator. Choosing to keep the Underground Sea up so that way I can entomb on their end step, but we also have access to Brainstorm Fetch. Looks like we're facing lands. They get rid of a Bayou. Elvish Reclaimer. So they still have Crop Rotation open. I don't love that, but I think we're supposed to... I guess I could try to set up a, an Exhume. But then if I wait, they have Reclaimer. I think we're just going to Entomb now. Grab Archon of Cruelty. Cannot be bounced via Caracas. We'll fetch. Actually, I don't even need to fetch here. Exhum. Triggers. No crop rotation. Feel pretty good about that. Archon of Cruelty doing its thing. Play Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. All right, so it's not lands. This is green-white depths. Take a draw step. Thought sees you. Ending. So they just have a pair of lands in hand. Swing batter batter. Swing. You draw another land. We can now fetch in careful study. I guess I'll brainstorm first. Okay, we'll get rid of those. Fetch again. And now if we find a creature, we can animate it. Sure, Atrox is pretty good, I heard. Animate dead on the Atroxa. Triggers. Ah. Okay, well, we won game one versus green white depths. Definitely want the show and tells here. We're also interested in Sarah's Emissary because it's a non legendary creature. Echoing Truth. Less interested in Grief. And Thoughtseize. Days as well. We're at a one animate dead. Hit submit. This hand does not fly. Mullion. What? What? Come on. Go to five. This is a hand that's just begging to lose. Like, I don't think we're necessarily supposed to get rid of this, but we're dead to endurance, ley line, crop rotation, and a bazooka bog. We don't have a reanimate. We don't have force of will. That said, keep. Put back two creatures. You have Amaya. Green Sun for one. Three cards in the opponent's hand. Take a draw. I like drawing the Mire for land two. We'll go grab a basic island so that way we're not hit by wasteland. Careful study. So this would beat a surgical, but not an endurance. Savannah, and they're just passing. Upkeep endurance. How many dazes did we board out? Two. I'll upkeep brainstorm. Okay, we'll get rid of the exhum. And then we'll redraw reanimate. It's fine. They have two in hand. Play Meyer. Pass. Caracas. Elvish Reclaimer. They have one in hand. And they're no longer representing endurance. So we'll fetch. Grab a swamp and tomb. We'll go get that Archon of Cruelty. Untap. Reanimate the Archon. Triggers. They could sacrifice the Dryad Arbor. I think I'm so like I could reanimate the Dryad Arbor, but I feel like that's a mistake, so I'm just going to pass the turn. They drew their card and it looks like they're passing here. Okay, let's uh, uh, get a nice brainstorm fetch on their end step. The Entomb doesn't help a whole lot with the Elvish Reclaimer on board. Because that can just go get Bajuka Bog. We'll fetch down to 8. Draw for turn. Another reanimate, I do enjoy that. Go to combat, attack, trigger. They get rid of Endurance. You draw Troxa, that's pretty good. They had Hushbringer in hand. That's a weird one. 
Okay. Let's reanimate their endurance. Endurance happens, we'll target them. So we're gonna make a coolish play here. And I say ish. Uh actually we're at eight, so my play we brought out grief. We have to pass. Okay, so my play was going to be to entomb, daze my own entomb, and then reanimate. Forcing them to use their Elvish Reclaimer to go get Bajooka Bog. And that means that we had an easy win on our turn, but because I'm at 8, I am not allowed to do that. But what I can do is entomb for another Archon, and we'll win that way. A wasteland, sure. And they concede, so we beat Celestia Depths, and we got the 4-1! Pretty sweet. Okay, let's open up our chest, and then we'll talk about the uh, deck a little bit, just because I love opening up chests. I used to never do it, and now I'm an all-the-time chest opener. You got a Gorios Vengeance. I've played some uh, Grishol brand here on the channel before. However, in general, it looks like our opens were a little bit stinky here. Unfortunate. Okay, so this deck. Obviously, we went 4-1. That's good. I think that the blue spells didn't really help us that much. Uh, I think that we also probably would have went 4-1 as Red Black Reanimator. Uh, the forces, I really missed the few times that I activated Gristlebrand, just not hitting free discard spells. So no unmask, no grief. Only two copies of these effects. Uh, it hurt. I'll say that. So I'm not sure if I would actually play this if I, on my own volition. Like, if I had to play Reanimator, I think I'd probably still play Red Black personally, but I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm certainly open to your feedback. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day and keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.